Hello everyone, it's uh, good to have your company back on this part two of the many changing faces of the Flying Scotsman, the Flying Scotsman story. Just a quick correction here, at the end of the last video I said uh, when I was showing you the uh, USA tour one, I said to you it's engine driven not loco driven like the previous double tender one that you'd seen. Well that was stupid because uh, loco and engine driven is the same thing. What I meant to say it's engine or loco driven uh, not tender driven like the previous double one you saw. Alright let's move on. To continue then where we left off at the uh, back end of the last video, let's just bring this round. Now um, I did notice something when I watched the video back that I'd done something I wasn't quite happy with. Right, um, if you'll note, you'll see on the top, uh, I put the light on the top in the last video up there. Uh, it didn't look right and I, had, I studied the photo and that's why I brought it further down and it looks spot on now. I've also done the sign a little bit, the plaque a little bit better and I've also fitted the two lights as well so she's now really looking the part now before we get the show on the go it's uh, time to tell you a little bit of information about what happened when she got there in, in the, the US of A right now it was supposed to be a three month tour and there's no definitive information that I can find of exactly how many cities she visited but uh, uh, there's an interview with one of the British glamour girls that uh, was part of the package that went out there and uh, she said that uh, at the age of 25 she was being paid to do uh, a job of being a glamour girl on a steam locomotive in America and what a, a thrilling experience it was for at the time. She mentioned um, Boston uh, and down to Washington. Now the only two uh, city names that I can tell you about, the rest I really don't know. Now as regards the concept of what she pulled while she was over there in the US, um, it's a little bit difficult because uh, unfortunately there's very little footage uh, available on YouTube or, or anywhere else for that matter and we're actually running over there in the US. There's a fair bit of footage showing the locomotive but uh, the camera tends to follow the locomotive all the time. You do get a couple of shots of the coaches but there's got to be less than 30 seconds um, uh, of what it's pulling and I really don't know. Uh, they look, they're certainly American, um, they look a little bit sort of like a, a cream or a white um, and I can't, I don't know, I'm not an expert on American coaches, I'm not an expert on English coaches, but you know what I mean. The one thing I have established is that the very first coach, it says on it, administration car or coach, something like that. Um, the other coaches, I have no idea. And the only other thing I do know for sure is that the uh, converted uh, Devon Bell uh, observation car is at the back. Um, you know, the travelling tavern, so we know that much. Now, in order for me to create uh, something like what she looked like over there, uh, what one of the quick passes of the video, uh, I did count six coaches all told. So I've gone down the road of six coaches. Now, in order to be able to put these coaches together, it involved using some continental stock, uh, which have completely different couplings. So I had to improvise uh, to get it. And I'm going to show you all of that now before we actually take a round. Starting here then with the tender, the second tender, uh, that's the uh, triangle type decoupling or Hornby type decoupling. It's fixed, I cannot remove it, I can't change it, so I've got to have to start out with that right now. If you've seen my video on the changing uh, of all the wheels, of your rolling stock etc, you may remember I did this coach, it's one of the... Uh, transcontinental silver ones it's the only one I've done I've got quite a few of these and you may remember that I showed you that somebody had made a very good job of converting the couplings to the American hook and horn type and they were done fine but they had left the original screws for the triangle coupling which are the two screws you can see top and bottom there which, so that meant if I used this as the administration coach I can take off the hook and horn coupling and replace it with an original metal decoupling so that's what I've done. So that gives us the conversion from that to that. So we're okay now with hook and horn from this point on. Now then we can slowly move the train on and show you how good it looks. Now I'm going to stop here for a minute because obviously that's the hook and horn and they're perfect together like that. Now something I will point out, this as you know I've just told you is one of the transcontinental Triang ones in mint condition. Now somebody told me that when Triang, stroke Triang Hornby were doing uh, the, any of the transcontinental stuff that it was done in HO scale. Um, I, I beg to differ on that, I, I don't think it was because, um, it, well I'll explain. I put on the back some uh, proper HO scale 
uh, I'll tell you what it was called, the American Express, which are like a nice creamy white and blue, which I thought, thought looked pretty close to the ones on the YouTube video. But when I put them on, they were so much smaller than that that I think it looked out of place. I just didn't like it. So I've opted instead for some nice southern Pullmans, which you can see here. And they've got the clerestory roof. And with the two of them together, look, it looks pretty much the same height and I think that looks a lot better so with that I'll just take her through for you and we've just got that being the second coach there so that gives us the third one and the fourth one with a bit of a wobble and a fifth one and then we're here and we're now at the observation car now this time I had to change things stay with me right what I did now you can see there on that end we've got the hook and horn but uh, I couldn't do anything about this end so what I did they slide out so I'll pull it out I put a slightly shorter bar in with one of those horrible couplings that I don't like if you've seen my couplings video because it was the only option I had because the observation card there does have uh, an NEM pocket and I replaced that for the other uh, NEM coupling there to go with that one so there you jolly well have it worked out perfect look and then again the height looks just about right at that so come on let's uh, let's take a round time to do this nice and steady for a kickoff that light on the front looks perfect now very much like that photo over in the quayside in the US right we're just going to run around Brilliant. Brilliant. Fantastic. Now listen, I'm going to bring her to a stop just here for a minute. It's nice and gently again. Yeah, she's a good crawler this one. Now, I'm going to stop her here and I'll tell you for why. Uh, don't worry, you're going to see more of her later. Um, that's just a quick run by there for you uh, the reason I've stopped her is because she's going to be running with something else in a minute or a few minutes and that something else is uh, important that it is told at this point of the video so uh, again bear with me now this tour of 1969 stroke 1970 was extremely successful it was backed by a lot of British companies and at the end of the tour they'd all taken big orders uh, so it was very successful in that sense plus also um, even though it was very expensive to do the tour they, they actually made some money they came out of it with a small profit now at this point everybody flew home at the end of the tour and Fly Scotsman was put into storage and uh, if Alan Pedler had have just brought her home from that point onwards everything would have been fine but he didn't do it he was so seduced by his locomotive that he decided to do another tour in 1972 this time it ended in failure by the 1970s the British companies didn't want steam to be re representing the the new Great Britain so to speak and so he decided to go ahead without any backing this time he took it to the west coast whereas the previous tour was on the east coast and I think at this point it really would be nice to hear Alan Pegler's voice tell the story we could only run as an exhibition train we weren't allowed to carry passengers due to American law the other problem was my, was my own making, is that I'd got hooked on driving the blooming engine. I'd got it to America, they'd said, well, you drive it. And I was having a ball driving it, and I thought, well, what the hell if some money's going down the drain? Never get a chance like this again. And I just pressed on. With hindsight, I would say one was balmy to have gone to America at all at that time. It was just the time when they, the Americans, were getting up to their necks with Vietnam. It was just the time that the Penn Central Railway was going bankrupt, on whose tracks we were running for the first six or seven hundred miles, and all those things contributed to the fact that life got jolly difficult. The voice of the late Alan Pegler there. In late 1972, Alan was forced to file for bankruptcy. Scotsman was still in storage, and I believe it was on something like an army base or an air force base, something like that, um, away from the prying eyes of Alan's creditors. A lot of people in the UK were worried that she would never return to her own country. It was at this point where the next millionaire entrepreneur stepped in to save her for a second time. 
His name was William McAlpine. Sir William, as he later became, paid off all of Alan's creditors and uh, with the help of the uh, American tour manager, um, they managed to sneak her out of the military base where she was being uh, stored and get her onto a ship back home. It was in February of 1973 on a cold snowy morning she was unloaded on the docks at Liverpool. She was under the ownership of Sir William for 23 years and during that time he completely overhauled her twice and there was constant uh, money needed throwing at her for this and that and the other that needed to be replaced as always. But over these years she did lots of tours up and down the country, length and breadth of England, the UK and uh, it was all quite successful all the way through. But one of the big highlights at this point while she was under the ownership of Sir William is that in 1988 she was invited to go over to Australia. With what happened last time in the US uh, Sir William had his bank do a credit search on Wall Stutchbury is uh, the creator of the old Steam 88 um, and his wife to assess the soundness of their project. After satisfying himself that a repeat of the Flying Scotsman stranded in the US in 1972 was likely not to occur, McAlpine asked George Hinchcliffe, a former manager of the Flying Scotsman and a former director, um, where the locomotive was based to help prepare it for the trip. The whole point of the trip over to Wales was quite simply uh, the Australian uh, Bicentenary. Have I said that right? I think so. Uh, in Melbourne and Victoria. So uh, yeah, a very interesting story this. You need to Google it as well. So, as you can see from this clip here, what I've managed to uh, pinch from a, a little bit of a YouTube video, this is the very first time she starts rolling in Australia. And here she's heading on the first journey down to Melbourne. And you can see that there's a strange water tender on her. And then what looks like a sort of utilities van. And then uh, back of that, it's like some sort of observation coach with the balcony at the back. So uh, yeah, let's see what we can do about this. Here we are, back on the layout. Time for some action. It's July 1988 and here comes the Flying Scotsman on her debut run in Australia. Alright, let me just talk you through this. Now, you can see the plaque is on the front. Flying Scotsman at the top there. Now, I will point out to you that she did wear that plaque at the top there on the uh, Australian tour and she wore the plaque lower down on the front of the buffer bar um, for the American tour back in 1969. But she never wore the plaques, as far as I know, um, on the front at any time in the UK other than when she was pulling the Flying Scotsman train which we covered in part one so I thought I'd throw that little bit in there for you right now you've just seen that clip and I've tried to replicate that as much as possible now look let's have a look at this look bring it through gently for you now first of all note 4472 is on the cab side there not the coat of arms that was there when she was in America. So that means that once Sir Sir William had bought her from uh, Alan Pegler, one of the restorations must have included uh, removing the coat of arms and putting the 4472 on there. Right, now we move on to this contraption. Now look at this. Now as you saw in that video clip, this is an auxiliary water tender. Now I tried to find one of these. Uh, I couldn't find one anywhere in the world. Um, and I didn't want to be beaten. I don't like being beaten. Uh, one can only assume that the conversation must have gone between uh, Sir William and the people over in Australia uh, about the second water tender being needed. And one can only assume that they said, look, don't bother sending the other tender. It's a waste of money. We can supply you with a water tender and or wagon, whatever you want to call it. Now, I, I wanted to get this and do it for you. And uh, for my fun as well, of course. And... I then got back in touch with my friend Eric in Slovenia and I sent him uh, a tanker, petrol tanker, which I've got a few of obviously and I sent him one that I could afford to uh, lose and he basically <laughs> cut it in half, stripped it, did all the work, painted it and there we, have, there we go, the Australian Auxiliary Water Tender, brilliant! Nice one Eric, I'll put Eric's contact details in the uh, description box at the end of the video for you again. Now, unfortunately, the story is not so good with the two vans as they called them on the uh, on the video. The first one, as you can see from that video, looks like some sort of utilities and I, I did search everywhere in Australia to try and find some Australian coaches. I was quite prepared to buy some, uh, but... Uh, 
I couldn't find very much really to be honest with you um, and what I did find there was no photos so I wouldn't have known what I was buying so I decided look all I can do is do it the best way I can and so I put something on similar it's the best I can do for you guys and at the back end we've got and unfortunately it says Canadian Pacific on it but I can't help that we have got the observation type coach with the balcony at the back which again is very much like you saw in that video clip so come on let me just bring around to the front because I've got one more thing to show you before we get the action going there we go right now just to show you right the decoupling there is not a problem but not a problem at all the decoupling there is not a problem either because that's what was on both of them but now get this see this coupling here look this one that is a hook and horn and it's a converter and I don't think many of you will have seen one of these let me show you this right guys can you see this this is a hook and horn converter for Triang and Hornby stuff look those holes fit perfectly onto any Triang or Hornby locomotive, uh, whatever, coach, whatever. Um, you do have to sometimes drill a rivet out and put a screw in instead, but then it converts it to that hook and horn like that. It, this is a coupling that I completely forgot about putting in my couplings video, but it's not one that you see very often. And I bought a bag of them. I knew they'd come in handy one day. So there you have it. That's a perfect converter from Triang to hook and horn. Brilliant. And so, as you can see there, it's absolutely spot on look. There's no difference in height whatsoever. Right, give me time to pour a whiskey and we'll get everything going around the circuit. Stay with me. Okay then, let's do this. It's time to see these two beautiful babies running together. Starting with this one. Now, I will tell you, if you punch in a search on YouTube for Flying Scotsman Australia, there's a lot of footage of her out there. In 1988 and 99 far more so than there is with her in the US and so there's plenty to look at plenty to choose from you need to go and have a look at that now as I said earlier this is just the very first the inaugural one it's uh, not the particular one that she's going to be featured in later so I'll tell you all about that in a bit right let's get the uh, US one on the go Yeah, that's looking cool and good and excellent and perfect. Do name it, it's there. Right, some reasonably good speeds and then we'll uh, give you some shots from around the room. I will point something out to you, you may have noticed, you may have not, but on the uh, on these grey southern coaches that I put on the US one here, these, um, they came with all the handles, the handrails and all the uh, accessories in separate bags and I haven't actually fitted them yet so that's why there's no sort of the handles or bars anywhere I just haven't got around to doing them but it uh, doesn't matter for the video anyway so yeah let's just uh, give you some good shots now a little later on we're going to see uh, the Flying Scotsman in Australia pulling a lot more than just these uh, more to tender than the two vans, there's a lot more to it than just that, so uh, you know, there's going to be more in a minute. So, let me have a look. Brill. Let's get the Aussie one again. This time around. Yes. Yeah, with that brilliant luxury of water tender, what Eric's done for me. Thank you again, Eric. issues again yeah I'm really sorry that I've not been able to put any uh, you know Oz coaches on that one and um, again when you see in a little while you'll see I've taken a, basically I've, I've copied a bit of a clip from another YouTube video over in Oz pulling a great lovely rake of coaches unfortunately I'm gonna have to do them with American coaches but like I said I did try to get some proper Oz coaches but not, not much luck guys really not much luck but these American ones I'm going to put on are Norfolk and Western. They're very, very similar in style to the ones that are on the YouTube video. video. And uh, yeah, it's going to look great. It's a really good set and it's going to look great. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to 
fade the two together, cross fade them, and we'll see the uh, Oslon coming round in a second. But in a few seconds, you're going to see it with some great looking coaches on the back. So uh, hang around. Now, as you can see here, I've uh, changed some of the coaches. I've put a full set of passenger coaches on, very similar to what she was pulling over there in Australia. Uh, I was going to put my Norfolk and Western ones on, but they happen to be at the bottom of the box. And these, uh, these came out, these Pennsylvania ones came out a bit quicker, they're at the top, and they're exactly the same. They're exactly the same as the Norfolk and Western ones. They look exactly the same with the Clarestri roof. And so uh, I thought they'll do, they'll be fine because, as I've said, I'm truly, truly sorry, I'm not able to put you some proper Australian coaches on. But these look very, very close. So let's get some shots around the room for you with these two babies going. USA one. Yes. Oh, I'm enjoying myself here, guys. Right. And the Aussie one, the Australian one. Come on, Debbie! Yes! Looks perfect, brilliant. Let's get a, give me a few shots around. Oh yeah, it's looking great guys. Really, really good. <laughs> that, that tavern on the end there. I think it was called the Fireman's Rest, if I remember right. I think that's the name they gave it. The old tavern bar there on the end. Fantastic. Super duper. Yeah. I'll tell you what, that water tender, what it's done is, it was only a water container, whatever you call them. He made a smashing job of that. Um, I'm sure you'd agree, guys. Oh, uh, super duper super super. Okay. Well, you've seen a, a good run of all of these now. So I think uh, we'll bring these to a stop. Oh, on my knees again. Oh yeah, better give you some information about the uh, Australian tour, of course I have, yeah. She was out there for six months and she visited every state in Australia, uh, from Brisbane in the north to Liverpool and Perth, it could be Perth, wouldn't it? Perth in the west. So, wow, she covered some miles over there. I don't know exactly how many, but she covered some miles. She also set a third world record. She became uh, the, no, no, let me get this right now. She, she beat her haulage uh, weight. Uh, I believe it was, oh, hang on, hang on, uh, 19, it be 89, the year, yeah, after, the year after she arrived in uh, Australia. And uh, I, think, I think it was 735 tons she pulled. So she actually beat her own haulage record with that. All brilliant stuff. Yeah, that was from Alice Springs, I think, down to Melbourne, if I've got that right, if I remember correctly. It's hard remembering everything, you know, when you've been researching, you think, oh yeah, that's interesting, that's interesting. Then you try and remember it all to tell everybody. It's not easy. I should make some notes, actually. That probably would help me. But anyway, there we go then. So you've now just had a dose of the USA tour, or both of them in one go, and the Australian tour. So, yeah, let's just bring them to a halt then. Do it. There we go then. There she comes, look. Yes. Spiffing. Jolly spiffing, as Sam would say. <laughs> Talking about Sam, I know you haven't seen much of him uh, lately but he's uh, really really busy over the Christmas and New Year periods and he's also got a very hectic table at uh, timetable in university now so probably won't be able to get together as much but I'm sure we will again uh, sometime soon so right I think it's time to move on yet again 
In 1996, and after 23 years of ownership, Sir William decided that enough is enough. No more money to be thrown at the Flying Scotsman, so he decided to put her up for sale. Again to her rescue came another millionaire, entrepreneur, and this time a doctor, by the name of Dr Tony Marchington. He bought her at a cost of 1.5 million and after a three year restoration which cost an additional 1 million, she returned to steam in 1999. Tony Marchington also started his own company with the Flying Scotsman called Flying Scotsman Enterprises Limited. And for the next few years, this is how it looked. Okay, let's do this. period of time the Flying Scotsman Enterprises right there's a story to tell you here now obviously it's their look on the tender you can clearly see that now either I've got the story wrong here or something's not right because on the box of this uh, set with the loco and the two tenders it actually states um, on the Hornby box 1972 to 75 this is that it depicts her as she was in across that period of time 72 75 now look um, I don't know I, I, I'm, I'm not sure if I've got the story wrong here because something doesn't fall into place between 1972 and 75 is when she was owned by uh, Sir William Al uh, McAlpine now the, the thing is um, she made money for four years in this livery and in this state um, and then uh, the company went into liquidation but then again Sir William had her much longer he had her from 72 to 96 so he, he obviously didn't, didn't go into liquidation um, so William is actually the most wealthy of all three of the entrepreneurs that own her so I, I'm a bit unsure about this so what I'm going to do because to be honest with you on this last ownership uh, with Tony Marchington um, I'm sure they did a limited company called the Flying Scotsman Enterprises and the thing that bothers me here is that after he'd spent the million pound having restored over three or four years whatever it was she ended up with the Kyle Chap Double Chimney and it's not here on this model so I am a bit confused about the exact time period that she ran with this livery and that second water tender the other thing worth mentioning is when sir william had her um the videos always show a single tender uh, other than in australia where she had that um auxiliary water tender so i am a little confused exactly what period of time this was supposed to be but uh, either way it's obvious that it's a different set so we'll take her forward take her through let you have a look because this is certainly what it would have looked up looked like at that period of time yeah with the blue grey coaches come inside and match that second water tender so let's uh, let you have a look at her yep yeah, it's city coaches as well you know that's what you would expect check her through yeah look for the listen I've I've moved the uh, US USA Scotsman onto the second line uh, and I thought it'd be a good idea just to run her as well it adds for a bit more action and more stuff happening so we just left her on for that oh yes and by the way the other night I decided that I think the coaches would look better those uh, American coaches on the grey southern ones I decided that they would look better if I did get off my bum and put all the handles on and all the extra all the extras all the accessories and I have done it so hopefully at some point you're going to see it in a second obviously not there you watch they're going to keep passing each other aren't they they are they're going to keep doing this you watch oh no no we might just get it tell you what we're getting better if I slow that one down look handles all fitted steps all fitted <laughs> brilliant Yeah, I'm cool with that. Let's have a move around. Oh, yes, and also, uh, I also uh, noticed uh, when I was just double checking, as I always try to be accurate, um, during the years she was owned by Dr. Tony Martinson, she did have the Flying Scotsman badge on the front. I've seen it on the video. 
uh, some video shots of it on YouTube. So yeah, fair enough, I've left it on. It's as simple as that. And it'll get up, it'll spin around the room. Yeah, it looks good to me. Yeah, we're looking cool. <laughs> Fine by me. All right, there we go then. Yeah, there you have it then. The years with uh, Tony Martinson. Well, now you've seen that uh, part of the video and you've heard that part of the story. Bring them to the front for you. Fine with that one there. Okay, and number two, here we go. Yeah, so that's why I left the uh, plaque on the front. Looks good anyway. Ooh, that's a good final shot. I like that, I like it. Uh, right, now I'm going to clear the whole lot off because in part one I did say to you, you're not going to see any repeat locos and uh, running and, I, and I'm going to stick to that. I've got loads more to show you yet, so we're, we're still not done. Back in a bit guys. Here then everybody, in this uh, part of the video, we are still of course talking about the Flying Scotsman locomotive, um, but it's in the different guises that she came in, and I'm going to show you some now which you didn't see running in part one. Now, this one here, the first one, okay, 60103 in the uh, Brunswick Green, BR Green, uh, you did see a version of her like this in part one um, with the Kyle Chap double chimney there again um, but she didn't have uh, she had the uh, blinkers on the smoke deflectors uh, whereas now she hasn't now what I've done here look it, it's really important that I had to, I really had to do this okay we've got a utilities whatever you want to call it but then we've got the original Triang coaches and these are mint they've got uh, what's, what's that first one it's like Anne yes Jane then Mary and Ruth and then cart 79 on the end these are easy to find there's a lot of them about but in that condition nah, not so many about so let me just bring her through just to the front again I'm just going to show you each one of these in turn first so let's get it here that's brilliant super duper now next up now you didn't see this one at all in fact, I, I nearly forgot to mention it earlier uh, when I was telling you about the colours. I actually nearly forgot all about the uh, British Rail Express blue one. But there she is. Superb, as you can see. And again, because of the uh, smoke box patches there on the side, that of course still makes her an A3. But here's an interesting point. This is the only model I've got of her with the original tender look with the grill round the top just like the one I showed you in part one the photo of her at the uh, exhibition in London so in 1924-1925 so yeah wow that is a corker so there she is then in uh, BR Express Blue now I put a load of maroon coaches on her here when I say a load I mean I really mean quite a lot uh, and unfortunately she wouldn't pull on it, even with the uh, tires on the it's a, it's a tender driven one even with the tires on the tender which are, mm, they are a little bit um, 
brittle now, they're getting a bit worn, I perhaps could be putting some new ones on, but she wouldn't pull this rake. And the reason is the rake is, is, is full of all the old try and coaches with the plastic wheels and I, I've hoiled them and I've cleaned them but I haven't changed them for metal wheels so that made it pretty tough for her so what I did because again you saw this one in part one but you didn't see her running she's the original try and one with the single chimney as you can see there it's got the non corridor tender and um, you didn't actually see her running so I thought it'd be really good just to be different just to double head them to get these coaches around now look at the length of this guys I mean whoa it's a, it's a long one okay utilities one corridor coach two corridor coaches the buffet bar and we've got one two three four sleepers and another corridor coach and then the corridor coach brake on the end that's a lot and neither of them neither the blue or the trying original would pull them on their own so it was a great excuse to mix them like this which i think looks amazing so let's get around again we're going to stop at the front here it's like never ending that one let's stop at the front here while i uh, introduce you to the next one Come on, ladies. Yeah. Oh, the blue one's gorgeous, isn't she? Gorgeous. I can't believe when I was telling you the liveries in part one that I nearly forgot about the blue one. Right, over to this one here, the third one. Now, you did see her in part one. Again, it was only for about 30 seconds when I was explaining to you about the different uh, boiler domes and the banjo dome, etc. Uh, this is the gorgeous LNER. 4472 in the green in the apple green this time and i know she's got the uh, car chop chimney and i know a lot of people don't like the blinkers but at the end of the day you never saw her run and what i've done with this one i've kitted her out with a great set the cornish riviera coaches i mean this looks amazing so come on let's let me show you this i mean look at this lot it's amazing these are going to look brilliant going around the line so yeah once more to the front here she comes and it's an absolute gorgeous corker this one well they're all nice aren't they i mean come on they are they're all nice so there you have it so you've got 4472 apple green double chimney and smoke deflectors you've got the beautiful express blue br blue and then you've got the beautiful uh, double chimney be our green so give me two seconds and i'm gonna oh yeah we're gonna see these all going this is gonna be amazing guys so hang around all right brilliant footage coming up never seen or done before here we go start with that one triangle coaches the pullman's there i'll worry about the speeds in a minute just want to get everything running for you and then we'll have a look around different parts of the room and see how it's all looking okay the double header with the express blue and the good old trying one creaking away there as they do as you can obviously see i put them all the same way again uh, again i'm just trying to be different each time so it gives you some variations so that's looking okay as far as i can tell you right come on apple green 4472 cornish express coaches yeah you've got to remember guys uh, when she stopped pulling the flying scotsman train all those years ago and then became you know br basically and then the private ownership she was sent all over the place pulling all different sorts of trains from the one end of the country to the other, from left to right, you name it, she's been there, done it, and worn the t-shirt. So yeah, let's have a look at them all going round. Brill. That was good. Yeah, I like that. I like that. 
that was good. I like that. That's a lot of coaches moving, guys. A lot of coaches moving. Brilliant. I'd like to get the uh, express blue across for you on our own if possible. Don't know if it's going to happen yet. Oh, that was good. Oh, I like that one. Uh, I love that one. Hey, we might get it next time actually. She's on the middle line, so she's going to come round slightly quicker, I would guess. Yes, I've got it. I've got it, I've got it, I've got it, got it. The double header. I've got it. Brilliant. Really brilliant. Fantastic. Just what I was hoping for. And again, look. Oh, super duper, guys. A lot of movement happening here. A lot of movement. Yes. I mean, the double header looks amazing. I, actually, I'm glad in a way that neither of them would pull the uh, maroon coaches uh, of their own because it was an inspiration to put them together and it just looks amazing. Oh, it's just gorgeous. There's some lovely stuff running here. There really is. As always, I'm on my knees, so I'm sorry if I'm shaking the camera a bit, but, you know, I'm trying my best. Yeah, brilliant. Really tough with this. Really, really tough. Okay, let me get them back where we started from this time around. Right, 4472 in apple green. I'm more than happy with that. Okay, the double header. Headed by the Express Blue. Come on, look at that. Look at that. Oh, brilliant. You know, some of these locos are actually quite breathtaking, you know, they're so beautiful, they really are. Okay, 60103 with the double card chap chimney in BR Green to round it off for this part of the video. Oh, she's creeping. Look at that. Oh, she's done it. Oh, man. Fantastic. Ah, now, at this point in the video, you're probably thinking to yourself that, well, <laughs> we must have seen all the different versions of the Flying Scotsman locomotive now. Uh, well, guess what? You haven't. There's more to come. So, go and make yourself a cup of tea. Come back and join me in just a few seconds. Toodaloo. Now, same as in part one, uh, I think it's only fair that we give the diesels and uh, now the electrics uh, a quick mention in a few minutes time in this video because, um, you know, at the end of the day, the diesels and the electrics, they have been part of the Flying Scotsman history and the uh, the East Coast line. So um, there's, there's quite a few, there's so many different liveries that have actually run that line and I'm not going to try and go through them all because it would be silly to do so. But we'll show you just a few and we'll have them going around at something like an HST speed, sorry. And uh, yeah, yeah, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk you through it all. As you can see, now I don't know for sure if any of the diesels and electrics actually did have the plaque on, the flying swap from plaque. Um, so I thought, well, I'll give them a bit of credit and, and make it look nice, so I've stuck them on. Um, this one looks good just here on the front of the Class 91, but the Class 43s, it didn't look good down there. They looked better at the top, which is why I put them on there. So we'll just like get this going and uh, not do too much talking, just have them whizzing round and then you can see uh, three different, well, two different liveries here. We've got the Class 43 in uh, British Rail Intercity 125 uh, livery and then we've got the Class 91 and another Class 43 in the Swallowed livery. So I'll talk you through that in a minute. Uh, we'll start with the inside line as usual because otherwise it just gets blotted out. So the uh, Intercity 125 then in the, the blue grey type livery there she there she is class 43 and she's got a nice rake of the correct matching coaches buffet there not the longest one on the line today but it's just again to give you an idea what's uh, going to be coming up back through she comes yep yeah, i'm happy with that just there for the moment all right next up go for the class 91 now I do know that there's something missing 
on the front of that um, and I think it's in the bottom of the box but I can't find it at the moment so uh, I just thought I'd show you that anyway right we'll just take her through as well and they uh, get yet again you know uh, this time this swallow coaches whoops the jump there um, yeah fair rate on her yeah fair rate the DVT at the end look we'll bring her around Once again, I'm happy enough with that just there. And onto the outside then, with another Class 43, but this time in the Swallow colours. This is a pretty long rate. Now these coaches are all dappled. I bought a whole batch of them. They're all brand new. Um, never run them before, so it's for the first time. Now they have the plastic wheels, which is okay. Um, it's not a problem. Uh, well, in a sense it is, because I find with the Hornby Class 43s, and as you know, there's been so many different versions of it. Um, it's a good, it's a good motor. It's a good running loco, but it's not got tremendous pulling power. It pulls most stuff okay if they've got metal wheels, but when they've got plastic wheels, it's a struggle. Now I couldn't get it to pull all of these. It just didn't want to know. Even clean, clean new tyres and oiling all the coaches, it just still wouldn't have it. So basically, what I, I do when I run a, a long rake with only Class 43s on, uh, I just stick another power bogey on the other end and then it sorts it out. That's what I've done here. So we'll get these moving and uh, have a few few minutes fun with this. HST speeds then, let's go. Bring her up gently. Okay, let's get going. Oh, that's definitely something like it now. Yes, that's not too bad at all. Next one up. Stutter a little bit on that point. I think we might have a, a real cleaning needed problem on that. I'm sure when I get it to play HST speed it won't matter like that oh <laughs> no no worries now yeah that looks great all right keep them going get the other swallow past 43 and like i said wouldn't pull the coaches but quite simply power car there as well that sort the problem out so yeah let's have a look at it all going well, they're definitely HST speeds, that's for sure. And I, I've turned them all around clockwise this time again, just to be different. It looks great though, doesn't it? I mean, that does look good. You can't knock it, it does look great. Oh, yeah. The only problem with this direction is I can't get any further to my left because of the dog leg on the left. But, uh, yeah, it's great. And they're all certainly doing the business. Oh yeah, not off. Ooh, those bells they are. Oh, oh, oh. A lot of wheel noise as well, everyone. Not surprised with this lot. They're so good, no derailment. And it's the wall by the back on, they're all moving. Yeah. So you look it. See them now, so uh, I'll fake this one out, and I'm going to show you three more. So uh, hang around. Okay, everyone. As I said, I'm going to show you three more of the uh, kind of diesel electric uh, locomotives that run on the East Coast Line. And like I said earlier, it is important that we show these because they are very relevant to the East Coast Line and the Flying Scotsman story. But 
I must point out something to you very important before I showed you the last three uh, electrics and diesels I did say that you haven't seen all of the Flying Scotsman steam locomotive variations as of yet and you haven't and I'm going to go out with a bit of a bang as you probably know if you see my other videos I do try and tend to do something a little special on the ending so I just wanted to point that out to you because at the moment we've got three more of the diesels and stroke electrics on the line and you need to see these because uh, the first three you saw were the class 125 in blue grey livery the class 225 in uh, swallow livery then you saw the class 43 in swallow livery now you're going to see the class 43 in uh, one of the virgin liveries which is basically the uh, red and black one you're going to see the uh, a virgin livery silver and red in the class 221 set which is a, a spin-off from the apt uh, vanished passenger train and you're going to see uh, the class 91 uh, actually named the flying scotsman uh, coming up right this minute but of course like i say the end of the video is going to be all about steam it's all going to be about the flying scotsman locomotive steam 4472 now as you can see here the one on the left is the class 43 virgin one and i put the flying scotsman uh, plaque on the top at the, uh, of her which looks great uh, on the second one you can see to the right of her you can see the class 221 uh, in the silver and red uh, virgin livery and i put the uh, plaque uh, close down to the front in between the headlights which looks really good just there but i don't have to do anything for the third one because as you can see here she has the thistle on the front and she actually says the flying scotsman we're going to have these three running in just a few seconds Okay, we'll get these all on a run around and then uh, afterwards we can move back to 4472 for the, for the finale of the video. Um, back to the steamers. Here we go. Line one first. Yes. Cool. Yes. Okay, we'll slowly get the speed up. Yeah, getting more like it now. Yes, and that is another power car on the back end, by the way. Okay. Line two. Oh, another oh yes. Slowly bring her up as well. Goodness gracious, they're flying guys, they are flying. Okay, let's go for it. Line three. Here she goes. Line Scotsman, class 91. Well, certainly got some movement going again. Try and get a couple across for you when I can. Yes, that's good. Oh yeah, two. <laughs> Try and get the last two to one set. Yeah, she's a bit carried there, I'm afraid. It's going to be a hard one to get on her own, I think. Well, we're certainly moving, there's no doubt about that. Right, I'm going to take a chance on something here. I'm going to tweak them all up to tremendous HST speeds. Middle line first. Oh, grief, that's moving. That's moving, guys. Look at the speed of this now, look at that. Oh, right, inner line. Class 43 set. Right. Get some more shots in for you. Get the shots from up above. Wow, man. 
just look at that. Oh man. That oh. Well, like I said before, these are also certainly doing the business. Well, there you go, you've seen a little bit now. So uh, we'll do another fade and we'll come to the uh, last chapter of the video. Back in a short while, everyone. Well, peoples, we made it to the end, to the final chapter of this two-part series of the Flying Scotsman locomotives and trains. As I said earlier, this has been a long time in the making, a long time in the planning, and knowing I would want to put something special on the end, I couldn't think of anything better than this. So then, everybody, here we are on the final run. This is absolutely beautiful. Oh, she's beauty. She's a beautiful locomotive. Little bit of wheel slip in there. She's got a lot on her plate, I can tell you now. But let me show you the loco. This is a, one of the real special Hornby ones. It's mint. Obviously, it's brand new. The details on her are absolutely amazing. The cab details, not going to be easy to show you I'm afraid, but you can take my word for it. She's beautiful. Now, for those of you out there who don't know certain facts, when a locomotive is chosen to do any royal duties, the cab roof has to be painted white. It's like a mark of respect, I believe. Now, I am not aware of any diesels or electrics that ever performed real royal duties though it may have happened but if it has I'm not aware of it and uh, being not aware of it I don't know of any with white roofs I must admit that most of the time when you hear about royalty and trains um, it's always a white roof and it's always a steam locomotive so yep she is absolutely stunning there's no doubt about it whatsoever she's pulling a large rake of 10 coaches they do take a bit of pull in. This one is a locomotive driven one and it's a beautiful machine. So we'll try and get it through. I'm going to talk you through the coaches of this Royal Train and how it all comes about. Well, she's doing that straight away. Right, let's start here. Right, this is one of the older coaches. This is what's called the, uh, uh, oh, give me a road dry. It's, it's the staff support brake coach. Now the section at the back there is where the staff, uh, for the, you know, the uh, waiters and supporters, whatever, where they, that's where they would sleep there, and obviously that would be their accommodation there. Now directly behind that, we pull this one through. Now this is 2903, this is the latest coach for the Queen. She has this one, all to herself. So there it is. Now I have run these coaches once before on the Queen's Diamond Jubilee, which was a couple of years or more ago now. Uh, but I have added an extra coach, which I'll tell you all about in a minute. And um, we'll move on to the next one. So we next up is 2904. Here. This is the Duke's coach. He has this all to himself. Again, same thing. And this is the latest one as well. Now Behind that is 2915, as you'll see here. This is the sleeper, and that would be the sleeper which both the Duke and the Queen would use. No doubt they would probably sleep separately these days, but I'm sure there's plenty of room in there for two to sleep. Next up, we've got this one, 2917. This is the kitchen, restaurant, buffet, bar, whatever you want to call it, probably all of those names combined really. And there that one is that's another wonderful coach now behind that I've got going the opposite way to the first staff support coach you can see I've got another staff support coach and this time the sleeping area is on the left and the accommodation area is there now the reason I've put two of them on there is because it's quite fair to assume that say for argument's sake as that's the restaurant coach 
then maybe this would have the chefs and all the people regarding the food etc whereas the very front one which is in reverse would probably be the people looking after the queen and the duke accordingly so that seems fitting to do that now next up we've got another coach 2903 which is initially the queen's coach as you can see here this is a an earlier one and it's fair to say uh, we've pulled her out of retirement uh, because this particular train will say is housing more royalty like for argument's sake either of the two princes Harry or William or um, Prince Charles and Camilla and if that was the case with more royalty on the train then pulling the old uh, Queen and Duke's coaches out of retirement would certainly fit the bill so that would be their own um, apartment coach whatever and then behind that again we've got 2904 which is another early version so again that would be fitting for argument's sake for Camilla in that one sorry um, Prince Charles would be in that one and Camilla would be in that one on her own now the coach I've added in which I didn't have last time I run them is this this is 1074 I believe it's 1074 1034 sorry yeah now this is another sleeper and I got this at a really good price and I thought well that's going to be good because if the train was this length featuring extra royalty bringing out those two coaches out of retirement to perform this uh, type of train setup then it would be fair to assume that another sleeper would accommodate anybody else in those previous two coaches there and lastly on the end we've got another uh, staff support break with the sleeping accommodation at the back and here is the their living quarters and of course they would be looking after the royalties in those two coaches there so that would make a really good setup for the royal train and i couldn't think of anything better to do than feature this at the end of the video so let's just take it round and it's running really really well this locomotive has no traction tires or anything like that but it pulls it as you can jolly well see there it's a nice steady speed I'm not going to go mad in fact I will slow it down so you can get a run around run across look how well she's pulling it not even nothing not even a problem whatsoever she's pulling it fine so just tweak it up I have oiled all the plastic wheels which are on some of the older coaches the metal ones I haven't bothered they're generally all right so we'll speed her up and get a few shots around sorry shaking the camera again aren't I the royal train at the finale superb superb brilliant absolutely brilliant she's more than halfway around the track actually now here she's going into sensible speed it's nothing super fast don't really need to do that Get over here for you yes yeah, we're doing well, this is great. So I'm trying to move it on the knees again. All along the room. Oh, brilliant. I don't think you could ask for a better finale for a two-part series like this of the Flying Scotsman. Nothing better than pulling the Royal Train and the Royal Duties. So as I'd always planned this one to be the final, yeah, it kind of is. But let me tell you something, not too long ago, and I mean within the last three to four weeks, something came up that sparked my mind to think, hang on, could I not include this in my Five Scotsman video as well? So I think I can. So just stay with me while I just bring this to a stop so you can see the locomotive again let's just do that first let's get it through steady Ooh, a little bit of slipping look looks good though when that happens oh look at that it looks great when that happens 
Right, let me tell you. This something cropped up about three or four weeks ago and I simply thought, could I possibly use this in my Flying Scotsman video? Could I actually better the ending than the Royal Train pulled by the Flying Scotsman with the white roof? And I thought, now that wouldn't be good. To try and better the Royal Train wouldn't really be a nice thing to do, I don't think. It would be a bit disrespectful. So what I thought, could I at least match it with something else that's very special and I think I can and then we are at the end and so everybody here we are at the end of both parts of the Flying Scotsman story coming round now is an extra little something special that came up only like I said about three or four weeks ago and it was never intended to be on the video until I actually came across this but I now had to do it let me show you what we've got okay it's just oh man I, I, I can't believe it just check this look this is a post-war livery L and E R always looking fantastic 1947 livery but look she's the only model I've ever seen with the numbering of 103 okay the black war years one was done with um, 103 on one side and was it 503 on the other 502 on the other side uh, but either way yeah this is 103 and the special thing about this one look guys it's absolutely gold plated 18 karat gold throughout everything metal is 18 karat gold this is a I, I don't know what else to say I really don't guys I really do not want, know what else to say I run out of words she's got the single chimney there and for the first time you can see this is the only model I've got with the round um, dome there rather than the banjo one but the fact she's got the patches still makes her an A3 which is exactly what I mentioned in part one uh, video uh, where not all of the A3s got changed to the banjo dome so this is a typical example of that now she has got a lot on her plate and I'm going to bring her through slowly and show you what this is pulling right let's do this okay now I will tell you she's tender driven and if she wasn't tender driven she would not have been able to do this and I'm very sure of that because the tender driven one has the traction tyres and I think her loco driven one without traction tyres would not have done this. This is going to be the longest train that you've seen in both parts 1 and 2 of my video on the Flying Scotsman. Right, she's first of all, she's pulling this look. This is an extra long CCT van. Now, um, for the young'uns who don't know what that means, it doesn't mean closed circuit television <laughs> or TV. It means a covered carriage truck. Now, these were actually banned in the uh, mid 60s by motor rail. What they were originally used for is um, basically moving cars and apparently the uh, the width on them is very small and there was a very tight squeeze in getting cars into them and also the doors were on both ends and apparently it took a lot of time to shut the doors I'm not quite sure why that would be but it, it, it that's what it says that it was and uh, of course that means that uh, they got banned right now like I said it's going to be a long train so let me take this through slowly first of all I'm going to show you these are the early um, Hornby ones now unfortunately they do all carry the same number which is 22357 well we've got one there then we've got another one then we've got another one and we've got another one so that's four then we've got a sleeping car which is 1316 I think or 1318 one of the two I can't tell through the camera and we've got another sleeping car of 1237 now I'm going to show you here what I've done now we're moving on to the later Hornby ones the high detailed ones and this one here is another sleeping car uh, the number is I can't see from here actually is it 1208 yes it is now this second lot of teaks 
um, have the um, NEM pockets on them so there I've put a decoupling on uh, an NEM uh, ver version obviously to connect to the back of the ones which had decouplings on them so if we go through a little bit more now from now on you'll see that I've coupled all the later ones with the um, tow bar uh, accessory which is a, like I said is a Backman idea if you've seen my other videos and I've mentioned them before so there we've got the buffet then we've got two two three five six I think and then 1486 and then we've got oh so I can't read all the numbers through <laughs> through the viewfinder and 24387 is on the end which is the break she is pulling 12 coaches along with that CCT truck and I'll tell you now this is amazing check this out There's nothing better than an LNER Flying Scotsman pulling teats. This is why I think from a credibility point of view and a beauty point of view, she equals the Royal Train. Check that out. This loco is managing this with no effort whatsoever. This is amazing guys, look at the length of that. Now, I'm going to tell you this is nothing like high up from a juice level but what is surprising is this is a Rinfield motor in the tender and I'm going to show you something now which you're not going to believe just watch this I'm going to tweak her up and just watch this now this is a, a Rinfield motor look at that that is unbelievable it is amazing come on absolutely stunning that just look at it Oh man, that is incredible. And to tell you what, I'm about just over halfway on the juice. Any more, and I'll tell you what, those coasters will be flying off. So, what I'll do, look, stop her there while I go down and pour myself a fresh whiskey. And then we're going to see both of these running in the final. Alright, everyone, we need to do this now. We need to get to the end. I'm going to try and give you some pretty realistic startups here. So let's start with the uh, Royal Train. Here we go. Good. A little bit of wheel slipping. Looking pretty realistic there. Yeah, and again. But she's managing not a problem at all. Looking really, really, really good. Okay, get her across in a second or two. Look in the business without any shadow of a doubt. Now we've got the speed up. There she goes. Okay. The gold plated 103. There we go. Really cool looking. You're not going to see a wheel slip because obviously she's tender dry, but we we'll still crack her up steadily like this. And it's looking good. It's looking mega, let alone good. Oh, yes. Right. Now we've got the boat at speed. Let's get some good shots. Oh yes. Don't you just love this? Brilliant. I'm going to try and get you a couple of sweep acrosses. Like that. Till it's beat me actually. 
think we'll try that one again. <coughs> Do me. Right, take two. Oh yes. Can we get the other one? Because I think the alkaline is actually getting ahead. So let's hopefully we just should be able to get the uh, royal one this time round. Oh, better still, both of them. Oh, brilliant. Superb. Well chuffed with that bit. Right, let's get you some more views around the room, as we do. Now the outer line, um, the gold plated one, 103, she's actually going quite a bit faster than the other one. And even though she's on the outer line, she's actually managing to get ahead. Slowly but surely she is doing it. So we will see them separately pretty soon. Like now! Hey, you couldn't touch the better than that one. That was perfect. Oh. Oh, that was amazing. Let me move back a bit for you. Yeah. It's, it's normally not quite the case when the outer line is going round because it's actually usually a longer circuit so it tends to not catch up but because I've set uh, the uh, gold plated one 103 running a bit faster than the inner line she's slowly getting ahead every time look and you can see that quite clearly here I think we're even going to get the royal train on the road this time I bet you we will we are doing look yes exactly what I expected but, uh, hey hell, hell's bells they're both moving they're really moving guys they're really doing the business Big time! Right, let me try and get some shots around the room for you. Right, let's go from here. Pick one of them up and I'll follow it. There we go. Okay. 103 first. Yes. Come on, we'll get the other one in a minute. This time around, here we go. 4472 with the white roof, pulling the world train. Perfect and brilliant. No bonus to say. Perfect. Right. Let's have a look now at some onboard camera stuff featuring different angles, directions, positions and lots of action. Don't go away. Stay with me.
Well everyone, I think really we are at the end now. You've seen absolutely everything in this part two, including the extra special bit here at the end with the gold plated 103 which came into my possession like I said three or four weeks ago um, and I, I just couldn't I couldn't resist putting this on. I had to do it. It had to be done. So with that, well I'll go out with the blue screen. Bit of a message for you all as well. And I think we need to bring everything to a stop now. They've both performed absolutely admirably, no derailments, no problem. It's been absolutely wicked. So let's slow them down. Here comes 103. Tender driven and what a great crawl look. What a great crawl. You know I have found with the Ringfield motors they can be a bit hit and miss. Sometimes they can be brilliant like this one. And other times they can be a bit mm, lethargic I think is a good word. Okay. The Royal Train to follow. Come through once more on the slowdown and then we're going to get her. And we're going to get her slowly on a crawl. Well, that couldn't have been any better. Wow, we're at the end. This has been a massive undertaking. I do hope you've enjoyed everything. Like I said, I'll go out with the blue screen and a special message for you all. Thanks for watching. Whew. Well, that's all folks. I got there. I achieved it. I've done everything that I wanted to do across these two parts. Um, most important thing to me is, um, you know, I've actually managed to do it. No, that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is that you guys like it. I've enjoyed every single minute putting it all together and I just cannot thank you all enough for your following and your support and your comments and everything, it's fantastic. So uh, I'll just say it's been a humongous task but uh, I'm really not bothered. Okay, at the end of the day I'm going to say good night, God bless, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, be in the best of health and uh, I'll look forward to seeing you on my next video. Bye everyone, bye.